Hello and welcome once again to our video version of Church Today. My name is Chaplain Elisa and I will be leading our time of worship and fellowship. As I often say, even though we're not together physically, we are together in spirit. So I welcome you in the name of the Lord. In North America, February is Black History Month, a time when we remember the, the contributions and the struggles of our Black brothers and sisters. So today I have some African cloths in the background in celebration of Black History Month, and we will be looking at the theme of dignity, dignity. So again, welcome and please join me as I begin our time together in prayer. Let's pray. Great and loving God, we ask that your Holy Spirit would bless our time together and refresh us with your presence. In the midst of a world full of trouble and strife, we thank you for watching over us, guiding us, and as we confess our sins, for forgiving us. Enable us to enter your presence today joyfully and reverently, and let us depart with the assurance that our sins are forgiven. Fill us, O oh God, with the peace that passes all understanding. We pray in your holy name. Amen. Amen. Let's start with the doxology. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. The words will come up on the screen. We'll sing this through twice together. Let's worship together. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye. And now let us affirm our statement of faith by reciting, The Lord is my shepherd, Psalm 23, together. Here come the words. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Amen. Let's continue our worship. We're going to be singing a lot of wonderful African-American spirituals today in honor of of Black History Month. Let's begin with Swing Low, Sweet Chariot. Swing Low, Sweet Chariot. Here come the words on the screen. Jordan and what did I see? 
scripture reading today on our theme of dignity is very short and from the very first book of the Bible. This is Genesis chapter 1, verse 27. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him, male and female. God created them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let's continue singing. Let's sing, Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. The words will come up on your screen. Our second scripture reading today is from St. Paul's first letter to the Corinthians, chapter 15. Here's what Paul said. Not all physical objects have the same kind of physicality. There is one kind of physicality for humans, another kind for animals, another kind for birds, another for fish. Some bodies belong in the heavens and some on the earth. And the kind of glory appropriate for the ones in the heavens is different from the kind of glory appropriate for the ones on the earth. That's what it's like with the resurrection of the dead. It is sown decaying and raised undecaying. It is sown in shame and raised in glory. It is sown in weakness and raised in power. It is sown as the embodiment of ordinary nature and raised as the embodiment of the Spirit. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let's continue singing this beautiful gospel song, the blood will never lose its power. Great encouragement here. Here come the words on the screen. Let's worship together. you mm -hmm. 
So let's pause our singing for just a few moments and think a little bit more about dignity, dignity. So as always, you might want to be prepared to pause the video. I'll pause at a few points and ask some questions, and you might want to give yourself a little time to think or to share with someone that you're with or even write some things down as we consider this beautiful idea of dignity. My first question for you is, how do you feel when someone treats you with dignity? How do you feel when someone treats you with dignity? You can pause the video right here and list some feelings of that. Well, when you're treated with dignity, when I'm treated with dignity, I feel like I matter, like someone cares, that I'm important, that I have value, right? That's what dignity imparts, that you are special, you are worthwhile, you are respected. That's what dignity is. So let's think again a little bit about dignity and that sense of that we matter. Why? Why do people matter? Do you think that you or someone else matters because of a big bank account or because of uh, your personality or you matter because you have a certain skin color? Do you think that's why people matter? Any of those things? No. No. The first book of the Bible, Genesis, describes how God, our Creator, created everything. Out of every single thing in the universe that God created, the only things that are made in God's own image are what? Man and woman. People. The only things. This concept is called Imago Dei, image of God. In Latin, Imago Dei, image of God. And that's the essence of why people matter. People matter because we, we alone, are created according to the image of God. Isn't that incredible? You, you, whoever is watching this, you actually are made in the image of God. Every single person. Every single person. A bank executive. A maid. Someone who flies airplanes. Someone who sweeps the floors. The highest and even the most lowly person you have ever met is a king or a queen in the eyes of God made in the image of God. Now, what can change that? What can change our status as made in the image of God? Ponder that for just a second. It's a trick question. Nothing, nothing can change that status, nothing. The status of human beings as made in the image of God, your status, as a king or a queen that is in the image of God is permanent. Nothing changes it, no matter what. In a sermon that he preached in 1965, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. said this, The whole concept of Imago Dei, the image of God, is the idea that all men have something within them that God injected. Not that they have substantial unity with God, but that every man has a capacity to have fellowship with God. And this gives him a uniqueness. It gives him worth. It gives him dignity. And we must never forget this as a nation. There are no gradations in the image of God. Every man from a treble white to a bass black is significant on God's keyboard, precisely because every man and woman is made in the image 
of God. We must believe this and we must live by it. Amen. So let us pray in silence for just a moment, remembering the dignity of all people, you, me, everyone, and that we would always be growing to reflect more of God's image that is in us, God's image of love, mercy, truth, and justice. Let us pray silently for just a moment. Heavenly Father, it is beyond amazing to think that we are made in your very image, that you created us to reflect, to embody your qualities, your very character, your very image. And Lord, the immense dignity of all people, every single person on this earth that bears your image. Lord, may we be people who see that truth and who respect and act with the dignity that all people deserve. And now let us pray the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Let's continue singing. Let's sing, He's got the whole world in his hands. Let's worship together. Here come the words on the screen. He's got the whole world in his hands. He's got the whole world in his hands. He's got the whole wide world in his hands. He's got the whole world. Let's follow that up with, I am on the battlefield. I am on the battlefield. This great gospel song. Here come the words.
And now I'm honored to introduce you to the Reverend Olivia Smith, who wrote this beautiful prayer, Light of the World, to commemorate Black History Month. Reverend Smith will now pray with and for us. The Light of the World by myself, Lydia Smith. Bright, shining Christ, there is much for black and brown bodies to dread here in the Americas. The trauma of the transatlantic slave trade lives in our bodies. The legacy of enslavement lives in our systems. But the thin gospel of oppression could die in our worship if we choose to shine bravely, reflecting your glory. If we choose to reject the lies of racism and white supremacy. If we choose to dance, make music, share pain, spread joy, wake up and be magic. We can choose to fight for a better society, and we can remember that we are of the earth and of the stardust. We are precious, loved, and called to shine bright like the stars we are made of and the sun that we follow. Help us to make good choices. Help us to shine brightly. Amen. Amen. Thank you to Reverend Smith for that beautiful prayer. Let's continue singing as we seek to shine our light into this world, this little light of mine. Let's worship together with this song. Here come the words on the screen. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. both Dignity and Black History Month, is a history of African-American quilting. This is adapted from an article from Scalawag Magazine by Ellison Langford. I'm sure a lot of you out there have done quilting. There's a beautiful history of this. A spirit of originality has always threaded through the evolution of African-American quilting. One formerly enslaved Georgia woman's skill and creativity made her one of the most famous names in quilting. Harriet Powers was born in 1837 near Athens, Georgia. And in 1886, she exhibited a quilt at the Athens Cotton Fair. 
and it was very different. Rather than patterned blocks, which were typical of that time, Harriet's square was dec each square was decorated with appliqued figures and symbols depicting different stories from the Bible. And this quilt is now preserved at the Smithsonian Museum. In more modern times, a different kind of minimalism makes the quilts of G's Bend some of the most celebrated in textile history. G's Bend is a remote community southwest of Selma, Alabama. And historically, the residents of G's Bend were descendants of slaves who eventually became sharecroppers. The quilts made by the people in G's Bend use long established methods from the European tradition, such as geometric blocks, but in very unusual ways to make very novel patterns. Many have triangles and rectangular, rectangles that are irregular, and many have uneven borders. Older quilts were made with scraps of flour sacks, denim coveralls, and worn out dresses. And the black quilters have pulled from several different traditions at once, nowadays incorporating techniques from Harriet Powers, from G's Bend, and European traditions. And this is what gives modern African-American quilting its unique and vibrant style. Aren't these beautiful quilts all one of a kind, just like people? that inherent beauty from something they have created. So let's continue singing, shall we? When the saints go marching in. Let's sing when the saints go marching in. Here come the words up on the screen. Oh, when the saints go marching in, when the saints go marching in, oh Lord, I want to be in that number. When the saints go marching in, oh, when they crown him, Lord of all, oh, when they crown him, Lord of all, oh Lord, I want to be in that number. And let's sing this beautiful song, We Shall Overcome, We Shall Overcome. Let's worship together.
please receive the closing blessing and then we will sing the doxology together again one time to close. Please receive the closing blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and grant you peace in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let's sing the doxology again together one time to close. God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Amen. Thank you again so much for being with me today. Happy Black History Month, especially for those of you of African American or other Black ancestry and heritage. God bless you. Go in peace. Know that I am with you in spirit, praying for you and love you. And I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye. Oh,